Hey family, hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. Just waiting for everyone to come on for story time tonight. Welcome, 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 welcome. Tonight's story time is one that is tried and true to my heart. It's called, What Are You Gonna Do With That Hair? And it's written by a really close friend of mine. Her name is Indija Anderson Yantha. She is a native of Canada, but she um, she's also, she's my Spellman sister. She's my sorority sister. And Indija is, um, right when we were about to finish Spellman, Indija and a number of us, got awarded study abroad, uh, not study abroad, fellowship opportunities. And so one of my good girlfriends, Juliana Montgomery, who with whom we spoke last Sunday, she went to Prague, I went to Morocco, a number of Spelman women went different places because we're awesome. And Indija benefited from a fellowship called a Watson Fellowship where she went to about seven countries across the world studying hair and braiding technique. So I wanted to share with you because in 2016, she published this really cool book called What Are You Gonna Do With That Hair? And so if you are like me and you are a little girl of color, you have a little girl of color, you have ever been a little girl of color with curly hair, then you know full well that this book is all about talking about the different ways we can use, um, we can do our hair. So I hope you like it. I loved it. I read this to my daughter, and I'm happy to read it to you now. My name is Zuri, but everyone knows me as the girl with the puffy hair. My hair is super big, curly, and fuzzy. Have you seen a girl like Zuri before? Have you been Zuri? Well, I know I've been Zuri. It grows out and even gravity can't hold it down. Sometimes my hair likes to do its own thing and it gets all tangly. So when my mother used to comb it, I'd scream, please just cut it off because it would hurt so much. Have you ever done that? Madison does that like every time it's hair day. And please pardon Madison's out, uh, absence. She's out shopping with her grandmother. I have what is called African hair, which is kinky or extremely curly and frizzy. The same type of hair as my ancestors who came from Sub-Saharan Africa. Did you know that people from different backgrounds have different hair textures? Partly because of the climate where their ancestors lived. People like me with African ancestry usually have thick coily hair because it insulates the heat from the sun's heat to keep it cool. But the curliness of this kind of hair also means it gets tangled easily. Do any of you have hair that sometimes gets tangled easily? Sometimes the kids at school and sometimes even my cousins ask me, what are you gonna do with that hair? Why don't you just perm it? And if you don't know what a perm is, ask somebody else. Why should I, I say. I think my hair is wonderful and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now that I know how to take care of my hair, I don't want to straighten it. The unique texture of my hair means I can shape it and design it any way I want. I can turn it into beautiful works of African art and be proud of my heritage. And if your hair is curly like mine, then that means you can do it too. I'll show you. You can braid it. Braids are made by intertwining three or more strands of hair together. 
you can crisscross your hair into thick plaits, into teeny tiny single braids, or any size in between. Are you aware that hair braiding is an ancient Egyptian art? The ancient Egyptians were probably the first people to wear their hair in braided styles. Archaeologists have found artwork in ancient Egyptian tombs showing all kinds of hairdos, wigs, extensions, braids, and twists that were worn by people from all walks of life thousands of years ago. Even royals like Queen Nefertari, the wife of Ramses XI, 13th century BC, wore their hair in braids back then. Frescoes in her tomb show the queen wearing thin single braids held together with gold thread at the ends to keep them from coming undone. Since the time of the ancient Egyptians, braids have been worn in different forms by humans all around the world and they are still very popular today in many places, such as India. Hey, Auntie Lou. Yeah, this one was written by my, good, my Spellman sister. Well, Laren Spellman's Spellman sister too. But nowhere did braiding take off like it did in Africa. In Africa, hair styling and hair braiding especially was an art form like sculpting. Braiding soon became a favorite social and cultural pastime all over the African continent because it gave people lots of time to chit chat during the many hours it took to create the hairdos. As the threads of hair were being drawn tightly together to create beautiful styles, so too were the relationships between the braider and the hairstyle wearer. Right, because we know that these styles can take five hours, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours. Hair braiding also gave the artistic members of a community a chance to show off their creative skills. African hairdos were very fancy, often combining different styling methods such as braiding, wrapping, cutting, and shave patterns all into one hairstyle. Braids, flowers, corn, coils, shells, beads, and strip of the, strips of cloth were hair accessories of choice and were braided into the do's, such as hair do's, that is. Each hairstyle had a meaning and could tell you important information about the wearer, such as age, gender, religious beliefs, social status, where he or she was from, and sometimes even a person's family name. See? Isn't that so cool? Did you know that braiding connects black people back to Africa? Braiding is one of the few African practices that survived the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage, or the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, was the middle portion of the slaves' trip from Africa to the New World during the transatlantic slave trade. How slaves, both male and female, wore their hair in braids and cornrows to keep it tidy and presentable for their slave masters. Field slaves plaited cornrows and threaded or tightly wrapped with cloth or thread their hair to keep it out of their faces as they worked in the fields. Field slaves also used bandanas or head ties to shield their heads from bugs, the sun's heat, and the shame of not being able to take care of their hair like they used to in Africa. Many black women still use head beads and head ties to protect their tresses when they go to sleep or to cover their heads when their hair is not done. How many of you have worn a head tie? I know I do. I love a good head tie now. Hey, Sora Karen. Love you, love you, love you. 
Slave women would teach their daughters how to braid, and so the tradition was passed from the hands of grandmothers to mothers to daughters, tying their hairstyles to their African roots. <laughs> That's a good thing to do, Auntie Lou. You can cornrow it. Cornrows or cane rows or track braids are a traditional African braiding technique. Cornrows are made by braiding the hair onto the scalp surface after parting the hair into a design. Have you ever noticed that the patterns created by these braids look like rows of planted corn or sugar cane? That's how the hairstyle got its name. This hairdo was also seen as a symbol for civilization, culture, agriculture, and order. In Africa, cornrow styles had special meanings. Certain styles were created for religious ceremonies, war, festivals, or rites of passage. Unfortunately, many of the special meanings were lost during slavery. Although slaves in the New World wore cornrows to keep their hair neat and tidy, only children would wear them in public spaces because African hairstyles were considered inappropriate. So for hundreds of years, people thought braids were only for kids. Hi, Indija. Indija, the author of this great piece is on Hello, sister. Love you, love you, love you. However, in the 1960s and 1970s, when blacks began to get back in touch with their African roots during the black power movement, cornrows became an acceptable and much loved hairdo for adults again. It wasn't until the 1990s, thanks to rap and hip hop artists, that cornrows were embraced worldwide. And in the 2000s, even celebrities and international runway models can be seen wearing them. You can twist it. That's my preferred hairstyle of choice sometimes for my child. Twists are similar to braids, except they are made by intertwining two strands of hair instead of three. Twists have been a long time style of choice in many African groups, such as the Afars, and the Karayus in the Horn of Africa, and people from the Maghreb region, or North Africa. Come on with the two strand twists. Did you realize that there are several different ways to twist your hair? Two strand twists are the basic form of the style and are usually made using your own hair. There are other forms of twists that are made by using different textures of extension hair. Twists can be either started out as a braid from the root or by twisting the hair from the root to the tip. I typically twist Madison's hair from the root to the tip. Senegalese twists or rope twists, which look like tiny ropes, are long twists made with sleek extension hair. Have you heard the term Senegalese before? Senegalese refers to someone or something from Senegal, a West African country that borders Mauritania, Mali, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and the Gambia. Senegalese women have been known for being master braiders. Kinky twists are short two-strand twists made using kinky extension hair. Marley twists are long like Senegalese twists, but are made by using frizzer extension hair. Marley twists are named after Bob Marley, the king of reggae who introduced dreadlocks or dreadlocks to the world. Havana twists are chunky versions of kinky twists. Did you know that Havana is the capital of Cuba? Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean and the birthplace of salsa and rumba, which are Afro-Latin dances. So this is kind of what I do to Madison's hair. If you saw her now, she has two of the styles that are mentioned in here, but the back of her hair looks like this.
And for all of you all, you know, under this crochet, I have cornrows. Hi, Sister Bernita. How you doing? Love you, love you. You can flat twist it. Flat twists are similar to cornrows, only you create them with two strands of hair rather than three. Or you can untwist these styles into what's called a twist out. Now come on for the twist out. You can Bantu knot it. Bantu knots, which are also known as Zulu or Nubian knots, chinny knots, I'm sorry, chinny bumps, pepper seeds or hair nubbins, are, <laughs> that's always funny to me, are made by sectioning your hair into triangles, diamonds, or squares, and coiling those sections into knots. Bantu and Zulu people are from Sub-Saharan Africa, while Nubians come from Southern Egypt and Northern Sudan. This knotted hairstyle has been worn for centuries by girls throughout the African continent and the Caribbean. Bantu, Zulu and Nubian are all names of ethnic groups in Africa. In some Caribbean countries, this hairstyle is called pepper seeds because of how the knots look. So here you go, look at that. I love a twist out. I love a twist out. Hey Stephanie, love you, love you. So just to make sure that we have our geography here are the Zulu down here. This region around is called the Bantu region. So even if you are a, even if you're in the Southern African region, then that also qualifies you as Bantu. And then you have your Nubians here. Your Nubians here. In the past, Bantu knots were usually only worn around the house especially after washing and detangling your hair because the knots help to stretch your coils out. Isn't that the truth? But nowadays, both girls and women can be seen wearing their knots everywhere. You can also give yourself a Bantu knot out. You can thread it. Threading or wrapping is another ancient African styling method. To thread your hair, you tightly wrap sections of your hair with thread or cloth. You've probably seen this technique before and did not even realize it. Amusement parks or fairs often have booths where you can get your hair wrapped with brightly colored thread. People also get hair wrapped when they travel to tropical vacation spots such as Brazil, where they are called tereres. Come on for the Bantu knot out. In the 1800s, slave women would use threading to help them create the style, white hairstyles of the day by stretching the coils out of their kinky hair. The slave women would tie their hair down in a bandana or hair tie during the week and keep the threaded sections from unraveling. Before it was time to reveal their straightened hairdos at church the next Sunday or for other special occasions. Yes, you do have to have your Sunday go to meet and hair. It was also easier to keep threaded hair off their faces as they worked in the fields and they would keep their hairstyles hidden under their bandanas. After church service and other events, the women would do what? What do you think? Rethread their hair and tie it down again for the upcoming week. Or you can extend it. Hair extensions are extra pieces of synthetic or man-made or human hair that are added to give length or body to a braided style. Extensions come in a variety of shades and colors, lengths and textures. Now see, this is what you do. You wear it underneath. And then here you go. There's your Sunday go to meeting hair. Your shindig hair. P 
People have been wearing false hair since around 3000 BC, starting with the ancient Egyptians who were among the first humans to wear extensions. Fake hair was very trendy in ancient Egypt. Almost everyone wore wigs made of black wool, cotton, human hair, palm leaf fibers, or horse hair. And the Egyptians who could not afford wigs would create similar looks using hair extensions. When the mummy of Queen Meret Amin, daughter of Ramses II and Queen Nefertari, was discovered, she still had several braid extensions attached to her head. Some of her other single braids were found curled up together in a basket in her tomb. You can naturally crimp it. Undoing any of these styles, whether braided, cornrowed, twisted, or threaded, will give you crimps without the need to apply heat to your hair. Because anybody who has hair, like we do, knows that you should not overheat your hair. Hi, Sorikari. You could even lock it. Dreadlocks or dreadlocks or dreads is a rope-like hairstyle created by coiling your hair into sections and allowing it to grow without combing it. Dreadlocks have really been given a bad name. Some believe that the first part of the name dread came from slavery when white people would call the tangled matted hair of the slaves dreadful. Rastafarians believe that the term comes from the fear of the dread full power of the holy. In other words, the awesome power of God. I choose to believe that. Thank you. The locks part of the name comes from how the hairstyle is formed. When hair is left uncombed, it naturally clumps together and forms into locks. Regardless of where the name came from, many wearers of this hairdo have dropped the A from the word dread to remove any negative meanings. Curlier hair locks faster than straighter hair, which is why African hair is the easiest to dreadlock. Do any of you have locks? My mom does. My nephew does. I think they're beautiful. When people see someone with locks, they often think of Bob Marley and Rastafarianism, or they make negative assumptions about a dreadlock person's hygiene, politics, or social class based on stereotypes. But would you believe that locks have actually been a hairstyle of honor for thousands of years? Both Samson and John the Baptist had locks. As Nazarites, holy men in ancient Judaism, they took a vow to never cut their hair, so they allowed it to grow naturally without interference. Hindu sadhus, or holy men, and Ethiopian Coptic priests have also worn dreadlocks as a sign of their holiness. And even ancient Egyptian kings are believed to have worn them as their crowning glory. Like the Nazarites, Rastafarians believe that the Bible requires holy people to not change the state of their hair. When someone joins the Rastafarian faith, they leave their hair to grow and it eventually begins to lock. You can usually tell how long someone has been a Rasta by the length of his or her dreadlocks. Rastas are also inspired to wear locks by two different dreadlock groups in Kenya, the Kikuyu, or Mau Mau, soldiers who rebelled against the British in the 1950s, and Maasai warriors who wear locks that are dyed red using plant extracts. Hamer women in Ethiopia and Himba women in Namibia are also wearing their hair in dreadlock hairstyles. Hi, Sister Virginia, all the way from the UK. Hey, hey, hey. I think that's so cool. We have people who are tuning in from Canada, from the United Kingdom, from Morocco, from South Africa, from Washington, the state, of course, from Virginia. Hi, everybody. 
Although Rastafarians wear their hair in locks for religious reasons and to celebrate their black pride, locks are a hairstyle that has been enjoyed by people of various ethnic backgrounds, hair textures, and belief systems such as the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Germanic tribes. The Aztecs, the Naga Indians, North American indigenous peoples, and Pacific Islanders. White people wear dreadlocks too, y'all. In Australia, for example, dreadlocks have become popular with surfers as well as curly-haired Aussies who prefer to lock their hair rather than struggle with their tangles. You could let it go and just fro. An afro or a fro is a hairstyle formed by patting curly hair into a round shape. This African hairdo, which used to be known as the bush or the natural, became a trend for South African women in the 1950s. This hairstyle is the equivalent of wearing African hair down, so it had also been worn by other peoples, such as the Karayu people of Ethiopia. You know, there's some people on who are viewing now who I tell you your graduation photos now. Your graduation from high school photos. You were rocking a nice fro. During the 1960s, the bush was rediscovered by blacks in the United States when it became known as the Afro. The Afro was the symbol of the black power movement by making the bold statement that black is beautiful. When African Americans began wearing their afros with pride, Native Americans were encouraged to celebrate their heritage too, and they began embracing their traditional clothing and braiding hairstyles in their own red power movement. Or frohawk it. Oh, I love to do a frohawk for Madison's hair. A frohawk. Hey, she's back from shopping. You see? She has one style in the front. Turn her head, turn your head around, Madison. And she has twists in the back. A frohawk is a mix between an afro and a mohawk. A mohawk or a mohican or an ifro or if or ifqua is a Native American hairstyle made by shaving the sides of your hair and leaving a ridge of hair down the middle of your head. To give yourself a frohawk, you can either shade the sides of your hair like a real mohawk or simply smooth your braid the size smooth or braid the sides of your hair upwards while leaving the ends down the middle or of your head. Although the name mohawk comes from the Mohawk Nation, an indigenous group originally from New York State, it has been worn by several different aboriginal groups throughout history. I love mohawks. I love I love mohawks. Virginia, I think you have your hair braided in kind of a mohawk style, right? It's beautiful. Or afro puff it. See the front of Madison's hair? Did you see that she had two afro puffs? Psh, psh. I love an afro puff. Afro puffs are ponytails made with afro hair. As you can see, there are so many things that your kinky, curly hair can do, and these basic hairstyles are only a start. The more I experiment with my hair, the more designs I discover. Let's see. I love seeing little girls with those cute little afro puffs, with cute little bows in their hair. Oh my goodness, it's just, they look just so scrumptious. Now, when I go to school, everyone asks me, how did you do that to your hair? And my cousins ask me, when can you do that to ours? Natural hair is so versatile. It can be worn curly or straight. It can be worn in a beautiful braided style or just out. And that's what makes it so awesome. Mm -hmm. 
So the next time someone asks you, what are you gonna do with that hair? You can proudly say to them, anything I want. Guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in to um, story time. If you have an opportunity, if you can, please do go to amazon.com and just make a purchase of this book. What are you going to do with that hair by Indija Anderson Yantha? You can get it on Amazon. It is in English and also in French. So you francophone parents, you can get this in French as well. Um, it's not expensive and it comes to you in a very short period of time. So please do make a consideration. She is a beautiful woman of color who created this. She went to seven different countries and compiled something for not only our children, but to empower us as people of color. So God bless you. God keep you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care, take care everybody. We love you. Bye-bye.